Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John. And in this week's episode, we are taking a deep dive into your asshole. <laughs> deep dive into your asshole. That was awesome. <laughs> okay, but for real. <laughs> We are... And you don't have to pay extra for it. We are discussing the asshole in your head. The asshole in each of us. Yes. Each of... We <laughs> or are, each of us in our asshole. We're exploring our own assholes. We're exploring our own assholes. But before we start touching on the asshole... Before we dive into our ass... <laughs> what are we drinking? We are drinking Arrogant Bastard Elf. From the Arrogant Brewing Company in Escondido, California. Uh, this is a great can, guys. I haven't opened mine yet. Um, Arrogant Bastard Ale. I have had this, this before. This be good. Have you had this before? I think so, but I don't remember. It's been a while since I've had it. I'm, I'm, I'm interested if it's as good as I remember it being. Yeah. Uh, with a name like that, I, I, you'd think I would remember it distinctly. Yeah. So as we pour our beers, I kind of want to give a premise of what this show is, because I know there's been a lot of joking already, and it's been fun. But... It's going to be uncomfortable. It is. Uh, Mm -hmm. Actually, John, this is kind of a topic that you brought up. Do you want to introduce it? Yeah, I I, I can do that. So the asshole is kind of a um, persona that I've given to, I think, a very common experience. I've talked to a lot of people about this, and it seems to be almost universal. But here's the experience that I'm talking about. The asshole is the voice in your head. They're always there. Yeah, um, yeah. And they're telling you about all the times you're going to fail, about uh, the reasons you're not doing anything right, about the ways you've gone wrong in your life, about uh, how you don't look good enough or make enough money or all of that. That voice that constantly sits in your head is the asshole that we're talking about here that, that we're, we're going to talk about. Yeah, we and, have personified it as this, this yeah. character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, I've, I've argued many times that that is the worst person in the world. Uh, worse than any... For an individual. Know. What do you mean? Uh, well, because there is at least one asshole for every individual that exists in the world. And your asshole isn't as terrible to you as my asshole is. Um, and vice versa. My asshole isn't as terrible to me as your asshole is to you. I yes. really want you to make sure that you're clipping some of this, okay, yeah. Mr. Producer? Make sure you're clipping some of this I, yeah. because cause I, I want to hear that, that my so, asshole is not as terrible as your asshole. So, wait, I, I guess I'm confused. So, my asshole, from my perspective, is not as bad as your asshole? No. Okay. Your asshole, from your perspective, is the worst asshole in the world. Yes. But to any other individual, that same thing is going to apply, but directed toward their asshole. Yeah. So, yeah, so what I was saying... It's your inner voice. And, and everybody, their inner voice is the worst. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so where I was going is the worst person in the world is that person that lives in your head. And the reason is that they're always there. There is no getting away from them. There is no, I don't want to hang out with this person anymore. They are always there. And, and uh, you know, I've, I've heard arguments for a large reason for the drive for humans' need for entertainment or downtime is or or a hobby or drugs or whatever that is is an escape from that person. Yeah, when we engage in escapism, it is to escape that asshole. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be disturbing. I think it'll be healthy. I it, hope. I, I think it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I, um, I I'm I'm a little concerned about it. I, mm. This is something that I hadn't really. Um, I don't know that I've wanted to. Uh, uh, ha- throw out there, so it's going which to be is why we wanted to do the show. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it, want, it you, is an uncomfortable thing yeah, to talk about, yeah. and I think it's a thing that a lot of people actively attempt not to reconcile. Yeah, I don't, I don't have that asshole. My life is great, and 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 he doesn't exist, or she doesn't exist, and 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 that's fine. And, you know, and I've, I've made that joke before, where I tell people, you know, that little voice you hear that tells you not to do something. Mm-hmm. Mine's broken. Yeah, that's kind of a, a running joke for me, but but. It's not broken. I mean, we all have that that, that thing in us. Well, and I think, um, you know, one of the questions when we were kind of pitching this show was, is that your conscience? And I don't think that it is, because your conscience is the thing saying, don't do that because it's wrong. Uh, The asshole is the one saying, don't bother doing that because you can't. 
you're going to fail, yeah. or you're going to look foolish. I or, think it's really closely related to your conscience. Uh, you I, know, I, it, I it, think it may so. be part of your conscience, but, maybe. But, but it's not. It's not your the full thing. Yeah. Well, and it it may be um, vocalizing decisions about right and wrong in a way that you are more prone to react to. Yeah. Because when we look at um, the wording, the phrasing of um, media campaigns, for example, sales campaigns, um, anything political, really, it's when you can engage somebody's emotions um, in, in a really high-energy fashion that are the most... Uh, that are the most impactful. And so when you can say a thing that makes somebody really angry, then you can elicit a response from them. And so perhaps it is your conscience in, in, in kind of with a mask on. And so it's trying to tell you that's that, a good way to see it, that this is a thing that you shouldn't do, but just that little nagging in the back of your head saying you shouldn't do this. And I don't think this is explicitly it, but I do think it could apply in certain cir- circumstances is something you shouldn't do. But that little nagging isn't going to get you not to do it. It's getting that that visceral response of saying you're not good enough and you can't do this. That's going to actually keep you from doing it. Well, and, and I find very much that, you know, the asshole can under circumstances, maybe even very wrong or illogical ways act as kind of a a mother bear protector type character um because i can tell you you know that 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 knack to you know you do something and your feelings are a little bit hurt but you know you you don't want to be that guy right so that knack to be like vindictive about it or to like you know plot or 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 to, to to get revenge that seems in me to come from the same place as 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 the failure thing um and so you know uh, obviously, that's probably not the best response to have, but is that kind of a defense mechanism yeah. in there saying, mm-hmm. you know, you, you can't you can't tolerate this? Um, is now, there a biologic reason why that's there? You know, yeah. is there is there something evolutionary in that? Yeah. Well, and and one of the ways that this this show kind of uh, came to be was that John and I were having a discussion. And he's like, you know, I don't even remember what it was about. And it's really kind of irrelevant. But he's like, you know. The, the asshole in my head is, is, you know, saying terrible shit and maybe making me not want to do something or something like that. Um, and, like, we started to kind of question, why is this asshole there? Um, and the thing that I kind of likened it to was um, I kind of think we've got to have him because... Um, He's the one that second guesses the things that you want to do. If if you didn't have that, then every urge that you have, everything that you want to uh, pursue, I think you'd be a lot more likely to pursue, um, potentially to your own detriment. Well, sometimes to your own detriment, but I think it also sometimes holds you back from doing things that, that, that could be very beneficial to you. Absolutely, you're not good enough. For, don't go start that new business; you're going to fail anyway. Yeah, yeah. you know, uh, don't don't take that risk. Yeah, don't follow your dream. Go, you know, take the safe job, do the safe way out. Yeah. You know? Well, and and so um, I I definitely see the downsides of it, but I kind of look at it and go, it's it's got to have it, its advantages, or I think we would have evolved out of it by now. Yeah. Or maybe we, maybe it's a recent ish development, and we. Yeah, I wonder still about that. Need to are, are we the it. only? Are we the only creature that has that? I mm-hmm. don't. I mean, who, who knows? So I'm going to ask this in a very like low key way. Mm-hmm. Uh, we probably should have discussed it before the show. Okay. But you you were talking about uh, uh, the assholes, megaphone, and laryngitis. Something to do with you. Okay. Do you mind if we talk about that? That's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> so um, you've been diagnosed with, and tell me the correct word. Bipolar. Bipolar. And so you were... You had to go to a doctor for that? I could have told you that that for free. Yeah, but I wouldn't have trusted you. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, so, so it was interesting because um, John has, in our discussions and our relationship, referenced the asshole numerous times. Mm-hmm. And it's never really been something that I talked about. Um, and he asked me, he said, you know, do, do you have that voice? And I was like, yeah, I've got it. Um, I, I said, you know, in fact, it, it's really interesting 
with the bipolar stuff because when I'm in a, a depressive state, it's like the asshole has a megaphone and is just yelling constantly. Um, and I, I don't know, I don't think that it's the asshole that sends sends me into that state, but I do think it makes it a lot harder to get out. Yeah. And then in the manic state, it's like my asshole um, has laryngitis and and so can't say anything, can't be heard over everything else that's going on. And so in that state, I'm a lot more likely to indulge in impulses and not have that second guessing feature. And I think that might actually be where that insight came to on that there might be some good to it. Yeah, so so that's kind of where I wanted to, to go with this because I think a, a, a lot of people, when they think about manic depressiveness, they think, oh, well, there's this bad time called depressive and this great time called manic. And it's not yeah. necessarily great. So, uh, you know, yeah. I wanted to talk about it because you have kind of a perspective that maybe some people don't mm -hmm. on the manic end. Mm -hmm. You know, what is, because you kind of get that experience, what yeah. is life without the asshole? Yeah. Um... I, I, and I, I guess I want to preface this by saying that, um, not everybody experiences bipolar disorder the same way. Mm -hmm. Um, and in fact, uh, I was diagnosed with, um, I don't go through the full range that a lot of people do. Um, I have hypomanic and hypodepressive states, so they are still variations far enough from the norm to qualify, but they're not um, quite as big as some people. Because, you know, you'll see uh, some people who go into a manic state and and they'll be going out and, like, getting DWIs and, like, streaking through public fountains and, like, some pretty, like, intensely um, unbelievable stuff, you I, know. I, I, I've streaked through public fountain before. <laughs> Um, but the interesting thing about that manic phase when you don't have something second guessing you there, um, you feel unreasonably good about yourself. <coughs> and it's interesting, um, at least from my own perspective, is that I have a very reasoned and logical part of my brain saying it doesn't make sense to feel this good about yourself. That is unfucking reasonable. <laughs> um, and, and yet it's kind of overshadowed by this, this other voice kind of going, now nah, you got this. Now, nah, you know, you want to, um, you know, it doesn't matter. You can binge watch this show all night. You can, um, you know, go out and, and binge drink. Uh, that, that's a, a lot of what mine ends up being. No, yeah. I'm kidding. Um, Kind of. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, when I was younger and not as aware of what was going on, it was, um, you know, it doesn't matter if you bang this virtual stranger. Um, whereas had I had the asshole, it might have been like, that, that's a, he's not going to want to bang you. That's a bad choice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's a bad choice. You're going to fuck up your life. Um, you know, and... And might have actually stopped that, but I think a lot of it has to do with curbing some of that those impulses that you have, and I think it contributes significantly to impulse yeah. control. I think you know, so too. I, I, I do wonder, and 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 I've I've wondered this for. Um, Sorry, it's a really hard thing to explain I, yeah. verbally. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I, I, I do wonder before, because when you described that, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, like late teens and early 20s. That's how, yeah, I mean, and I, I'm wondering if there's and like some amount of that that you just go through as, as like a regular evolution of, you know. Well, your, and think about it. Um, a lot of uh, mental disorders come from hormone imbalances, mm -hmm. which is what you're experiencing in your yeah, teens. Yeah. Um, huge fluctuations. Now, in your teen years, they tend to be a lot shorter and sharper um, than in bipolar uh, mm -hmm. disorder. You know, bipolar disorder is going to be potentially a month long, for some people, months long uh, depressive episode or manic episode. And, you know, maybe even a, a year of middle of the road fine. Because um, something that a lot of people don't seem to understand about that is... Uh, is that you are not always in one of those two states. Yeah. You 
gen- most people exist primarily in in the normal state. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they have much bigger swings than people without bipolar do. Yeah, I did. Uh, I've, I've never been diagnosed that way, but I, I I've. I've had depression my whole life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I take a real mi- mild medicine for it now because I found I've learned how to deal with it in my life. You know, right. but uh, you know, you talk about that voice, and uh, I I had never I never sat and, and, and considered it before, but you know, I spent a, a large part of my life uh, trying to shut that voice up uh-huh. with alcohol. Yeah. Now I I don't think I was an alcoholic per se. Uh, because when you I chose to stop, when I chose to stop drinking, I was able to stop drinking without any problem. Right. But I spent some time just, just I've got to shut that voice up because I could hear it. Yeah. And uh, you know, I shut it up by, you know, finding a bar with a jukebox, putting on some some loud music, listening, to me. and and I didn't want anybody around me. I wasn't I wasn't yeah. at, I was not at the bar looking for my friends. Yeah. In fact, my friends need to leave me alone. I would sit in the corner by myself on a pool table, listening to this this depressing music I put on the jukebox. Mm-hmm. And, and drinking myself into oblivion because it was the only way I could shut that voice up that said, you know, what are you doing? Why are you why are you doing this right now? Why, yeah. you, you know? Well, and I can tell you for me, you know, very similarly, you know, one of the, the, the big things that happens when that voice gets really strong is the first thing it tries to do to me is isolate me. That is always yeah, yeah. like number one, I, isolate me. And, you know, uh, uh, one of the things that I've learned to deal with it is like, I deal with it in a very direct manner. I have literally personified, named, I have a mental image of what they look like. I have embodied and separated that thing. And when it, whenever it starts going, uh, uh, you know, uh, me and Anna have, have developed this very trusting relationship. And I, I turn to her and I say, look, he's talking to me. He won't leave me alone. But I, I know that if I tell her, like, he's trying to isolate me, then she knows when I say, look, I'm, I think I'm just going to go hang out for you over here for an hour so you can be like mm, no, no you're not yeah. we're not we're, happening we're, you know and, 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 and so and, and sometimes it annoys the piss out of me right so I'll like I'll tell her like like you know it, you know I'm going there and then she'll be like no you're not gonna go hang out over there like but I wanna go fucking hang out over there yeah. and, and, and it annoys me but I also know that it's it, it keeps me from from you know from giving into that because I've, I've already told her she knows there's no secret here now yeah. of what's going on. You yeah, know? I well, used to. Um, I, my wife would call it my camping trip. You know, yeah, we, yeah. I would I would hit this point in the summertime. You know, usually about this time of year because suddenly I've got nothing to do. Right. You know, and I, I've got to go. Which makes I, it a lot harder to. It does. To it does. Quiet go, that I've voice. got to go, and I would just get in the car and drive, and had no idea where I was going, and end up camping out. But I was alone with that voice in my head, mm-hmm. struggling, wrestling with it, yeah. you know. And uh, and sometimes it helped. Yeah. Sometimes I could I could I could reach. I always thought it was helping. I was, mm-hmm. I was there trying to reach some kind of an understanding of what's going on. I'm measuring my life. I'm I'm, I'm seeing all this stuff. Sometimes it didn't help. Sometimes yeah. all I was doing was was you know drowning in it. Yeah. Uh, and didn't have anybody to pull me out of it. Mm-hmm. So I, you know that there there's time. My wife can tell you right now that. You know, she'll come home sometimes, and it's been a while since it's happened. But she, she'd come home, and here I am. Every light in the house is off. I've got Frank Sinatra playing, All the and the blinds I'm, are shut. Frank Sinatra's playing loud on the jukebox mm-hmm. and or on, on the stereo, and I'm sitting over there in the corner on the couch or something with a glass of scotch, and I'm just thinking, she's coming in, turning on lights, yeah, turning the music on. You need to get your ass up. This is yeah. you're not doing this now. You're yeah. not doing this now, uh, and I need that. I need somebody to do that for me. Let me ask this. I mean, this seems to be a pretty universal experience. I've not talked to anybody and then described the asshole, and they've been like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. You know, that's never happened. And I suspect that probably does exist for some people. Yeah. Well, I've not found them. I yeah. mean, you know, maybe, but I've well, not found them. if you look at them. the definition of a psychopath, I don't think they have that. I was thinking sociopath. Oh, so, sociopath. Yeah. So I'm not having it's the mental yeah. disorder. Yeah. 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 But uh, but so if this is such a common experience among humans, why is it something that is almost taboo to talk about? Yeah. I mean, why you know, it's, it's almost uncomfortable it. here. It's almost uncomfortable yeah. in this room. Yeah. I can it, feel it, it. You know, you're talking about what you what what we perceive as our own weakness. Yeah. Yeah. When, when it's it, it's probably not a weakness. It's probably a defense mechanism that's evolved over time yeah. to keep us from doing stupid shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, or, or to you know, sometimes to push us to do something, to, to yeah. just just to wrestle with the with it. Uh, but I don't know how many times in my life that I've wanted to do something and talked myself out of it because, you know, you really can't do that. You really can't yeah. pull that off. You know, yeah, you want to write this great book and you've got these great ideas, but you don't 
you're not a writer. Don't do that. You yeah. know, that voice is up there. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's it, it, it's crazy. Um, you know, one one of the things that I was I was really wrestling with earlier um, is. So, and I think there's more voices than like you and the asshole. In fact, you know, I think one of the oh, things yeah. that we have to come to terms with, you know, this whole idea of, of I'm an asshole. Um, now, I think we need to embrace that to an extent without like entertaining it, without yeah. like saying, yeah. Yeah. without I embodying it. I want to be an asshole. asshole yeah. you know? And I like it. Yeah. It's not Dennis Leary. We're it, not, uh, not. It's not a that. fucking competition yeah, here, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but if it was, I'd win. I'm uh, just well, saying. you know, <laughs> hey, I'll give you a run for your money. Um, but, you know, I think there are other voices in there. There's yeah. the scared voice and the, you know, let's go fight voice on thing. There's your cheerleader. Yeah, all that stuff. Um, you know, this one becomes a very, a very, a much darker one. But with all those voices, all, all those pieces of your personality that kind of embody you, I, I think a lot of times we, we try and take in our negotiations with this voice and we try and expel them or we try and shut them up. Do they have as much right to you as any other voice? Do they have as much right to your body and mind as anything else? I mean, are well, are they you? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah, because yeah, if they're, I mean, they're, I think they're us. They're mm-hmm. they're. It's it's not a it's not an alien living in your body. It's not yeah. Jiminy Cricket up there. They're whispering in your ear. Right. It's you. Yeah. Uh, and and, and I don't, you can't beat it. You can't. How do you defeat yourself? Right. You just got to learn to live with it. I yeah. think. I well, think you're always going to have it. Yeah. Well, and what I kind of imagine is all of these facets of yourself sitting around a boardroom table and negotiating quickly most of the time um, every decision that you make, particularly major decisions um, not as quickly in that case Um, and so depending on exactly what the scenario is maybe um, some aspects of yourself don't care as much but you do have these these few that are negotiating furiously. And that's, those are the moments when you feel torn. Those are the moments when you feel indecisive um, because they are sitting there negotiating and what you're experiencing internally is that back and forth that those different aspects of yourself are having. Um, Now, I suspect the reason that the asshole is one that we can more readily identify um, is both because it is such an intense uh, experience for us and probably because the asshole engages in more of those, those negotiations than I think probably the asshole and the cheerleader are the ones that engage in the, in more of those (coughs) negotiations than anybody else. I I think it's probably about the same. The issue is, I think, I think we recognize extremes more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, by, by doing that, the asshole is the one that we don't want to hear. So we remember all of that. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, it's like when you go to the pool hall and Mm -hmm. there's 15 people there that you love and then one asshole comes in that you, you don't like. For the All next week, you're talking night. about the one asshole. You yeah. got the 15 good ones. The same yeah. thing happens. Or two times, you make a killer bank shot, and all of a sudden, you have it in your head that you're, like, amazing at bank shots. <laughs> when really, you've missed a 98 yeah, out of the yeah, 100 that yeah. you've shot. But God damn, those two were good. Yeah, yeah, they were beautiful. That four-rail bank that was really just luck. You totally did it on purpose. That's when the asshole's quiet. <laughs> There's okay. a guy on my pool team that, uh, that, 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 that accidentally made this beautiful five-reel shot one day, and, and now he thinks he can do it. So he tries it every week in, a, in, in league and loses. <laughs> uh, anyway. It happens. So something I want to talk about are two types of activities and, and ways that I've found uh, that I have or, or I can deal with the asshole. Um, and and the the contrast between them, and then maybe get around Robin on if if there's been similar experiences here. Mm-hmm. But before we do that, yeah. is it time to I, talk I, about the beer? I think it's beer time. Um, okay. Who wants to start? Not me this time. I can start then. All right. All right. We're <laughs> drinking Arrogant Bastard Ale from the Arrogant Brewing Company in Escondido, California. Uh, this can is awesome. Uh, just just part of the experience. You couldn't have picked a better beer for this show. Right. Thank uh, you. Because I'm looking at this, and this is exactly the way I imagine my asshole looks. Uh, <laughs> Clip that, too, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> my inner asshole, not my outer asshole. My outer asshole doesn't look like that. I don't think. We need an image to verify. <laughs> uh, Hold on. I have let, me, let me get my, get my mirror. <laughs> um, it, 
excuse me. Uh, it, it's it's a it's a heavy beer. It's it is. Uh, it, it's it's dark. It's got a, a real woody taste to it. Um, and and I like the beer. I think it's a I, I, I think it is a uh, uh, an outstanding beer that that's succeeded in doing what it was trying to do here. A little heavier what, than most to be of your unappealing. Ales. Did you not like it? I think it is. I, I, I think it's it, it's been super successful at this. Now let me say this: it's the middle of the summer, and this is not a summer beer to me. That is true. And uh, you know, in, in, in the heat of Texas, this is not a beer that you can drink easily. Heat of Texas it doesn't no AC. It doesn't quench your thirst. It's no. really it's really to be to be enjoyed in a uh, in a different environment than we're in right now. I think. Uh, the bowels of hell. I Sorry. could see this. Uh, I could really see this beer being great. Uh, in the wintertime, sitting around a campfire, or sitting around a fireplace with your friends, or uh, if you've had a really shitty day, just sitting outside on a cool night. Drown the asshole. This is not a summer beer. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give it, uh, I think it's, it's better than Benchmark. I'm going to go 2-7. Uh, 2-7? Go yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, you want me to go or you go? I'm going to give it a 2.0. No explanation. What? Just I'm going to get there. I'm going to give it a 2.0. I think think uh, there are aspects of this beer that are good. However, I think that they made this beer bitter for bitter sake. Um, and it takes away a lot from the rest of the profile of the beer. Um, and, and I think this could be a much more enjoyable experience. It is a bitter beer and I don't it usually like bitter incredibly beers. Incredibly bitter. But the uh, there, there, there's a, there's a flavor profile to it that I like. I mean, I can mm-hmm. feel it rise and fall. It's got a bell curve to it. I uh, I, I agree. It, 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 I agree. It is bitter. But I think what it's trying to do, it's doing well. Well, and and I I think that it is trying to be a really bitter beer that has a small audience. And I think you are absolutely right that they hit the nail on the head yeah, there. Well, I would agree. I, I, no. Um. I don't but think this is everybody's beer by any stretch. I think this could be a much better beer, toning down the bitter just a hair. Just a hair. And I think you could have a more full experience of the rest of the beer there. I think you can have both beers. I think you have. You, you, I, I agree. I would like that beer better. Mm-hmm. But I think there's an audience that loves this beer because of the, the flavor of it. And it, it's done well for that audience. So, um, it gets But I'm with you. Me. I'm with you. I'd like, the other, I'd like the other less bitter beer myself. Yeah. I'm at a loss for words here. I, I, I can. You're gonna go lower than a two. Wow. Ask, ask your asshole. I cannot <laughs> believe you're the the girl who gives IPA such a high rating is saying this is over the bitter line. Uh, it, because it, it's not hot bitter. No, it, it's it, it's a great beer. Honestly, it is a great beer. It does have some bitters in it. It has a nice malt characteristic. It's balanced well. I'm giving it a two point nine. I've I've swallowed it and I feel like there is a skunk sitting on my tongue. Out of your mind. You're so, out of your mind. So, here's I'm what not I getting th- that. here's what I think that this this beer should here's how the world should be. This is nothing special. This is, is not a, a this is not a bourbon barrel age whatever. This is not a fine wine. This is not a seasonal release. But this is what production beer should be. This is what your everyday. You I know. think I think it's a niche beer. I do. I I I, I, I think there's a neat a niche audience that's going to love this beer and absolutely love it. Um, but it 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 is a it is a it's a beer for those people that like hoppy beers. It's not. I don't think that it's hoppy. I it tastes hoppy to me. Thoroughly enjoy drinking straight espresso. Bitter is not a problem. This is bitter for bitter's sake, though. Ah, uh, okay. come on. Anyway, anyway, so I'm giving it a two point nine. I think it's I think it's a, a good beer. I uh, I really enjoy it, um, and you know I think it's got a nice balance without anything you know like a cinnamon flavor in there and you anything know, really special. It tastes like beer. You know, we, we sit there and think about it two two seven two nine. That seems like a wide wide range, but really we're all in the twos. It's not a wide range on a five yeah. point scale. And, and I thought at first of yeah. giving it like a three three, and I said I cannot justify crossing that three line. Yeah. So no, I, you I can't. stuck at two no. nine. No, you know, no. I, I, my gut instinct was two five originally, but at, the more I drank it, I, I, I think it's done better than a benchmark. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll say this: it has grown on me from the first sip. I'm still not into it. Yeah. I was ready to torpedo this beer. Yeah. 
after the first sip. Really? Oh yeah. Oh wow. Oh yeah. No, I like surprised. it. I think it's the heat that's getting you because that maybe because this this tastes to me like like what I would think your your beer would be. Yeah, maybe. Um, now this is something I can get a six pack of and just go up, sit at the pool hall, and bullshit. And, and laugh at the asshole, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Mm. A little bit of Robert Johnson, the jukebox. And oh, this. yeah, I'm a, I'm, a cigar in my hand. I'm a very happy, depressed man at that oh, point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that makes sense to you guys, doesn't it? Yes, it does. You ever yes. been a happy, depressed person? Yeah. Yes. I, I get that way where, I look, I'm pissed off, I'm depressed, and I want to stay that way, leave me alone. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, Put on some angry music. See, my depression is. It sounds like it's a different than yours. No, mine. Mine oh. is. Mine is like 1930s blues. Oh, mine is like. Or Etta James or uh, Billie Holiday. All the songs where somebody is really pissed off at somebody else, and just like screaming about it. That's what I want. Lincoln oh, Park. Avril Lavigne. A lot of a lot of Lincoln Park. Um, no, that was me. I was saying I'm Lincoln Park. I could, oh, I could, oh, yeah. I, I could yeah. see you listening to Avril Lavigne, just pissed off white girls, right? <laughs> Don't you show me that finger, woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she uh, just showed me the finger. No, so, time uh, to play the game? I think we should play the game. Uh, Anna, you start. Fuck date lawnmower? Yeah. We're starting with fuck. Oh, oh okay. Oh, because we're still on the beer. Yes. Right. Sorry, I was already <laughs> transitioning back into the asshole. That's what she said. Save that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was already um, transitioning back to the asshole. <laughs> if I had a dime for every time I thought that. Uh, <laughs> I could see this... As a woman, if you recommended this beer to a guy who is really into craft beer, well, no, that's not going to get you laid either. Because this is a this is a pretty, like, well known beer. He's not going to be impressed by this. He might be impressed if he doesn't think you're into craft beer. Um, I am having a really hard time picturing an audience where this is going to get some dude laid. And I know I'm speaking very heteronormatively here. Me. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm going to. Uh, I, I, I'm going to fix that for you here in a second when we get to me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so this. You asked which date. This is the hookup beer, but it's only the hookup beer if, and you can do variations on this and, and come up with your own. But if you grab two pints of it, and then you walk up to that girl in the bar, and you got to walk with some courage, with your chest stuck out. Lean on the counter beside her, put it in front of her, and say, "Here's an arrogant bastard. Would you like an arrogant bastard to go with that?" <laughs> this is your hookup beer, and this is why this is why you didn't get laid very often, John. What? Come on, now that's great. It's a good line. It's, it's a good line. I don't think it would work. I think it'd get you slapped. And here's but... the response: I can get an arrogant bastard any day. I'd rather have a good beer to go with it. Hey, hey. We should go down to the bar and try the line. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. I, I will do it, and you know I will. Let's, Absolutely, let's, let's do it. Let's go see what happens. I get an arrogant bastard anyway, yeah, but how many are walking up to you like this? <laughs> Plenty. Good Oh, God. come on now. <laughs> come on now. You know most of them are sitting in the corner just staring at you. No. Oh. Is it a lawnmower beer? Hell no, it's not a lawnmower no. beer. Hell no, it's not a lawnmower beer. This is way, way, way too, uh, too, too, too thick and, and dark for that. This is, a, uh, this is a winter beer to me. All right. Yeah. Fuck date. So, you know, when we started this, it was just lawnmower. It was. And now it's expanded to fuck date lawnmower. And I got the boring one out of this. So, you, know, <laughs> you pictures. You pictures. I did. Well, I didn't know y'all were going to three years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, I noticed that Cosby has fallen off the list. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The, the Cosby beer has fallen off the list now. Oh, no, 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 no. Every once in a while, you yeah, get yeah. a Cosby beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Typically. This is not a Cosby beer. Yeah, that's the bourbon barrels a lot yeah. of times. That's that, the that's barley wine. That's the subcategory of the fuck. Yeah, yeah it is. It, that's yeah, the it's barley wine. Yeah. 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 So, uh, two types of. <laughs> I think we should add fuck on a lawnmower as one of the categories. <laughs> <laughs> that is every beer. Every beer. <laughs> okay. Or, or no beer. You might ought to be sober for that. <laughs> yeah. So, um,. The, the two types of activities we were talking we were yeah, talking about yeah. earlier. So I found that you know when dealing with mine that there there are two types of activities that I have to deal with the asshole on. Right, one is a very physical activity, and the other is a mental and or um, involuntary activity. So I'll give a couple examples. One is. Uh, you might say, don't write this this text or whatever because they're going to think you're an idiot. And you're like, well, fuck you. I can move my thumb, so I'm going to do it anyway. 
And so you write the text. I've made that decision too many times. <laughs> yeah, you write that text. So you do what, well, whatever the thing Facebook is. Facebook post you shouldn't have made. Yeah. Oh, man. Three yeah. in the morning Facebook post. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah. That's, that's the physical. But the other one's involuntary. So I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about here. A panic attack, right? <laughs> and the asshole can definitely do those kind of things or at least be a player in, in those kind of things. And so what I found is that there are certain activities that you have to, or you can, if you choose to, override. Just say, I veto you. You don't, you don't get to tell me what to do here. And others where you have to negotiate with the asshole. You have to come to an understanding because they have control over that thing. So my question is, Whenever you sit there and override the asshole, whenever you say, I'm not going to negotiate with you on this, I'm just going to do what I want, have you in some way, uh, you know, uh, I guess what's the best term to use, molested the asshole? <laughs> Sorry, that just, that just occurred to me what I was saying. Uh, molest, molested the asshole in the fact that they're a part of you that you're not giving fair, fair say to, that you're, you're not acknowledging, that you're not, you're not dealing with. You've you've kind of done a hostile takeover. Yeah, you you, of the you yeah it, it it would, you know you can flip the revolt the roles around and say what if the asshole had control of the body and you were the voice in the back and you had to deal with them and they were just like no I don't care I'm gonna go sit in a dark room and do what I want right, yeah. um, you know have you have you done some wrong to yourself whenever you don't negotiate. Hmm. Um, I don't know. Using the boardroom table analogy, um, I, I, I'm inclined to say, I mean, if the asshole's not negotiating anymore, I mean, there are some seems people like you, you come to an agreement. But there are some people that you don't invite to the boardroom table. And maybe he's that asshole that you just don't invite to the table. He's not in the discussion. But here's the deal: you that. didn't get to send out the invitations. You're just you're just there at the table. Yeah. You're literally just the boardroom. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, yeah. uh, at some point you've got to you've got to be able to put that to the side too, and listen to your rational side. Yeah. Well, and I I think your rational side is is one of the things there, saying you know this is the logical choice. This is you know these are all the. That's the one who is giving the fucking PowerPoint presentation on if we do this. this. These are the things that are likely to happen. These are the things that might happen if we do this. These are the terrible, awful things that will happen. I've you got know. this image of a boardroom, and there's a guy with a suit, blue yeah. suit. Uh, That's your rational and, side. And rational side, and, and, and like flip charts. Yeah, flip yes. charts. And then there's, charts are the best. Then there's yeah. this old hippie chick that's sitting there saying, if it feels good, do it. Yeah. Yeah. And... This asshole on the can here sitting there on the side saying, no matter what you decide to do, you're going to fucking fail at it. So yeah. just just don't do anything. Just give up. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's, it's funny. We talk about the devil. One of the earliest embodiments of the asshole was in Shakespeare. No, was it Shakespeare? With the first, uh, the devil and the angel. Yeah, the yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that is on Shakespeare. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that Twelfth yeah. Night? I think it's Twelfth Night. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Anyway, but but one thing I wonder is when you don't when you don't negotiate with the asshole when you like I I, I phrased it earlier molest the asshole does it then lead you know you have a panic attack or whatever yeah, your yeah. thing your involuntary thing is that that you have trouble with that that the asshole is taking over do you in some ways build up the asshole's rage. Oh, yeah. um, oh, and make yes. it much worse when the panic attack comes, or oh, yes. or when you know, uh, maybe it's maybe it's sexual confidence, or maybe whatever your thing is that the asshole like. I found that I could numb the asshole with the uh, with the alcohol. You yeah. like that? I could drink yes. this stuff and just just numb it until I didn't have to listen. But at some point, at some point, he got his revenge. It's going to come back, and it's all going to come back at one time on you. And I am broke the fuck down. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, yeah. it, you, it, if you if you push it back, eventually you're going to have to listen. Yeah. Now you don't have to do what it says, but you're going to have to listen to it and struggle with it at some yeah. point. Well, and I, I think we can liken that to um, I think we can liken that to negotiations. When you say I'm not going to give here, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to give. This other person is building up. You know, last Tuesday, when you weren't going to give, and I backed off. You remember last month when you weren't going to give and I backed off and over and over again and it starts listing out all these times that you pushed them to the side, this is the one I really want. 
and this is the time when I'm going to, I'm not backing down. You're going to sit down, you're going to shut the fuck up, and I'm taking the fuck over. And I, I think it's, it's very similar um, there. Oh, my God, you are the voice in my head. <laughs> <laughs> it was her. How, how, have you been whispering in my ear? Because that's exactly what the fuck I hear. Oh, man. Oh, that was spooky. We have something in that common. That was creepy, yeah. Uh, Anna's the voice in my head now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I always said it was you should my, be nicer to mine. I always drinking. Said, I always said it was my grandfather that I heard in those cases, but it wasn't. It was you. It I was love you. you. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. God damn it. I'm not giving up. You're fucking listening to me this time. <laughs> Seriously, though. Yeah, I, I know. I, I know. I think that it can be likened to that again. Uh, it's calling in favors. That person who calls you all the time. Um, and they're always wanting favors from you. Um, not everybody's going to do this, but those people get burned yeah. whenever that person that they're calling over and over again has a real big deal, needs to bury a body. That's the person they're going to call. <laughs> if you're calling in for favors all the time, just know you may be burying a body one it's day. It's true. <laughs> you want to bury a body, call Anna. Yeah. You remember... Whenever I didn't tell your wife that you were cheating on her, do you remember when um, I didn't tell your kid that the reason you didn't pick him up was because you were coked out of your fucking mind? Do you remember X, Y, Z? You know, guess what? I need to bear Everybody that watched this just watched you point at me for one and point at John for the other, and they now think that's what happened. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Not intentional on either of those. John, I didn't know that you did coke. I didn't. I didn't know that you cheated on Anna. <laughs> None of us knew he had kids <laughs> that he wasn't picking up. <laughs> I was just trying to speak to both of you guys. Um, oh, she's the voice in your head. She, she, I'm telling you. Yeah. But but seriously, um, giving me marital problems and you cocaine problems. So yeah. uh, <laughs> and children <laughs> and children. Um, I, I had a question though. Okay. John mentioned earlier that he has he has fully personified his voice. Uh -huh. He has he has a picture. He knows what that voice is. Have you personified yours, or is it just a voice back there? Uh, mine. Okay. Have you ever had a dream, and there's like a person in the dream, but you don't. They're not embodied in a a way that is material. Yeah. Um, and not saying there's some sort of like amorphous being or blob or cloud of mist or some shit. Um, but that's kind of what it is. Like, I recognize them as a human. They do not have... Like, I can't say that my asshole has um, green eyes and black hair and purple skin and no. three tails or some shit. Mine, mine is the omniscient narrator. It's, mm -hmm. that, that's what's in the back of my head. It's, it's just... It's like when you're reading a book and there's that, 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 that voice in, throughout the book that, that tells you what's going on around, mm, the, yeah. speaking around the character. That's what I have in the back of my head. It's like my li life is a novel and there's this one uh, uh, omniscient narrator that's just like telling the story and, mm. and predicting what I'm going to do as uh, it goes through. See, mine is the free reflection. I mean, you've seen movies where they look in the mirror, but the reflection isn't their reflection. It's yeah. talking to them. It's moving around. Mine is Yours the is Fight Club. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, huh. yeah. Yeah. So, and, and it's funny, after I started actually actively personifying mine and negotiating with it and talking about it, I've since had dreams of me in a room alone talking to the asshole. Like, in a very, like... Does he look like you? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. me. It is yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, it's not, it's not quite Fight Club. It's not like Brad Pitt's talking back to you. <laughs> right. No, it is. It is it, I, I'm, I'm talking yeah. to myself. Yeah. And I recognize... You know, I, I guess I'm going to put this in a really weird way because it's all going on in my head, so I don't know if this makes any sense. We look exactly the same, but I could pick either of us out in a yeah, lineup. Yeah. Does that make any yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know? I, I wonder if it's anything like, I don't know if you guys have seen one of the, you know how people don't like the way they look in pictures? Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things that they think is the cause of that is that in the picture, you are... Um, you are how other people see you, not how you see yourself yeah. in the mirror. Because the only way that you're seeing yourself is in a mirror. And so you look just different enough. So I wonder if you it's that. Flipped. Yeah. You, you Like, you, you know, the thumb. If you t turn your hand, yeah. it looks the same, but the thumb's on the wrong side. Yeah. You know? So I wonder if the asshole is a mirror copy of you, but because it's, or not a mirror copy, I guess, is a copy of you. But since it's not mirrored, is... How you can tell it separately. Well, no, but I mean, it, it's the guy in the mirror. So, I mean, I'm okay. mirrored in my head, and so is he. Yeah. All yeah, right, It's fine. interesting, though. It's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I've never put a, put a face with mine. It's yeah. just, you know, it's, it's, it's 
like God talking to you or something. It's just this omniscient narrator. But see, I, 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 think, a lot I think that's an important step I took when I was dealing with mine because, yeah, it is omniscient and godlike until you uh, uh, mortalize it. Until you embody it, and now all of a sudden it's something you can deal with. How do you deal with a disembodied voice? I use scotch. No. Yes. <laughs> see? Uh, you use the magic potion. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But, absolutely. But you see what I'm saying when scotch I say Scotch and Robert Johnson records. Yeah. So that, was, that was how I dealt with yeah. it. Uh, yeah. Lots of camping with Shakespeare. I read a lot of Shakespeare when I would get depressed. That's weird, isn't it? I don't know. I would I go out? I, I go you camping. read all the tragedies, didn't you? I go camping you by didn't myself. Read the no, no, I read. I read the. Yeah, I read the, the tragedies. tragedies. Yeah. Usually, Julius Caesar was always a good one, you know. But uh, uh, that's weird. That's weird what you do. Yeah. Who yeah. Knows? I don't know. I. I really hope we'll start talking about the asshole more. I should have said. <laughs> I hope we'll start talking about our assholes more. I can <laughs> just because that's funnier. I, I can talk about your <laughs> asshole if you'd like me to. I'm just, uh, I am glad to. So, uh, but I, I my do, question. I, I'm curious to see what picture John's going to use for our YouTube video introduction for this one. The asshole. What he's going to put down there. You know, I may put An this asterisk. guy. <laughs> I may put this guy. Honestly. Yeah. But anyway. I had those lavender pants. You could do something right now. Oh my god! So anyway, um, see, she said that, and, and I think I think I know what she was thinking. But the way she was doing, she's like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, lavender. You and me, baby. <laughs> so, anyway, is the voice telling you to stop now? I do hope that we will, as a. As a people. As a society, yeah. Start to talk about our assholes more. For the simple fact that it does seem to... Um, there are people for whom that voice is so incredibly overpowering. Mm -hmm. And I think recognizing it not only for its detriment but for its value is going to be monumental in in people being able to interact with and deal with it, it better. It, it's going to make a difference to me, I think, because I've never thought of it as having a value. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, I think there's a value to sitting there. You know, I think a lot of people take that and try and shove it in the closet. Yeah. And I say, fuck that, grab it and drag it into the light. Yeah. Make it talk to you. You know, I yeah. mean. This is 2018. We don't shove our assholes in the closet anymore. It's, it, it, it's, all, it's all open now. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Is, that, is that a better world or a worse one? Should the asshole be stuck in the closet? He was making a gay joke. I know he was. Oh, but yeah. I'm, I'm, no, I'm but, asking but, a question. No, no, I think I think I think it's true. Uh, I, I I think we uh, I think it's better to have it out in the open, be able to yeah. talk about it. Uh, hiding things is it, it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you don't talk about something, it just it just festers in you. Yeah. Well, and I think the fear of talking about things is way worse than the reality of it. And I think that goes back into that whole asshole persona. I yeah. think the asshole tells you not to talk about him. Yeah. yeah. And and Shh, I, I'm not here. Yeah. And and practicing talking about it. If you talk about him, they'll think you're crazy. Yeah, think you know, crazy. In, in a yeah. close trusted circle. Now, here's what's important. Mm -hmm. You need to be a close trusted circle because if you talk about it to Rando. And they're like, dude, get the fuck away from me. And you have that bad experience. Yeah. You're not going to want to. It's going to reinforce what, it. What exactly is this? Because we are a close, trusted circle that are talking about this. But it's going out to anybody tens who wants to people. listen to our. But, but, yeah. but here's the deal. Tens, it's, tens of people. It's much like the, the philosophy written on the back of the spear. I'm not going to read it all, but it's great. You should do it yourself sometime. But I'm talking to you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to this microphone. It's projecting out into yeah. to wherever land of thousands of people. And if y'all think I'm crazy or don't like it or like wish I wouldn't like air my dirty laundry, fuck you. I don't care. This show's not I don't, for you. Yeah. I don't yeah. have to hear from you. And you know what? All the social media platforms you can come to me through, whether it's email, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, I have a little button on there and I make shit up. Unlike the asshole in my head, yeah, I right. can make you go yeah, away. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the, let's be honest. This is really group therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's a little. A lot of our shows is. turn to group therapy. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. If you. Uh, this if is our been, therapy. Yeah, yeah. If you've been listening to the show for the last few months and been wondering if there's some dark shit going on <laughs> in one of our lives. Uh, uh, we have nah, gotten, we have gone. It's fine. Yeah, it's good. It's, we've gone very fine. dark the last but, yeah. six months. We have, but I've liked it. I, yeah, I feel like we, nice. we've actually gone deeper. Like you know, we're we're moving through the ocean. We we've moved past that 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 very lit place at the top, and now we're really getting find the yeah. interest stuff yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. Hell, you know, we've 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 covered the high, we've covered the the general knowledge stuff, mm -hmm. and now we're. We're past hedonism. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, we could go back to hedonism. I will never. That one's fine. I will never get past hedonism. Also true. Yeah. Um, yeah. This has been fun, guys. Have we covered everything? 
Have I think we covered so. our assholes? No. Yes. <laughs> I, I think I think we've if we haven't covered everything, I think we've covered everything that anybody wants to listen to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and and if, if that doesn't this doesn't do it, I can meet you at the bar with some Bob Johnson and we can uh, just yeah. drink and sounds like a plan. I got it. I got some. Uh, what, what's that scotch I drink? That's oh, it's good. It's good. I don't remember what kind of it is. Buchanan's. Oh, Buchanan's. Oh, yes, oh. Buchanan's. Yeah, I actually used to say I don't like scotch, and I found this stuff. I was like, no, I like scotch. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. You shouldn't like my scotch. I understand. Yeah. Hey, yours is okay. It, it's you just know. different kind. Different yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. But I think it's time, now that you're, you're, you're done being depressed, listen to our ass talk about our assholes. Um, I don't know how that's depressing to you guys. To, to recommend, well, I'm, I'm, I think it depressed a lot of people. Um, anyway, to recommend a different podcast, and the podcast we're recommending this week is Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll. Oh, the and things my. you use to quiet mm. your asshole. Yeah. So <laughs> this is a podcast hosted by Jay Okerson and oh, Ralph Sutton. I love Sutton. Jay Okerson. Yeah. Oh, he's and the best. they come on every, every uh, is it weekly or monthly? Anyway, they come on every show, whatever that is, and they, they bring on guests from, they have comedians, Rock stars, porn stars, all the Drug people stars. you might be interested in hearing about, and they just interview them. Very much a, a kind of like a, a, a Hot Ones or yeah. Howard Stern show. Um, I'm going to try that one. I haven't, I haven't listened to that one before, yeah. so uh, that sounds interesting. I'll check it out. But yeah, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll, check it out uh, on your favorite podcast platform. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, uh, I know there's some people out there that, that, that are curious about how we pay for all this, so if somebody wanted to help us out, what could they do? You can go to patreon.com slash sixpackphilosophy where you can sign up to get special uh, Patreon perks yeah. uh, starting at a dollar and go to the 500 level where you you can sleep with a host. We haven't decided if that's something sexual or if it's a nap. You know, we'll negotiate it when you pay. Depends on how hot yeah, you are. Yeah, exactly. Um, but or how sleepy you are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she might just be really tired. But Maybe anyway. just want to take a nap with Anna. There's a lot of things in between. You can actually watch us record the show live yep. for a mere $10 a month. Uh, we'll send you koozies. And you see everything before it goes out. Yeah. Yep. You get everything first. Or you can get uh, uh, early access to the videos. Uh, Buy these shirts. Yeah. Get, um, yeah, that, that, that's on Teespring. Yeah. Teespring, yeah. search Six Pack Philosophy. Anyway, but we would greatly appreciate your support. We are an independent podcast, and we are funded by listeners like you. So. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. and we appreciate all of our listeners um, yes. uh, and, and, and all of our all of our patrons too. Yeah, listeners, subscribers, patrons, all that jazz. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, if you haven't explored your asshole recently, we would highly recommend <laughs> you do so. I'm being serious here, guys. You stop laughing. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Um, but for real. Uh, Especially if you're over 40. If, if you're driving right now, make sure you pull over before you explore your asshole. It may be Please. good to, to get a professional to help you explore your asshole. <laughs> I didn't say when. Um, but anyway, yeah, take a look at your asshole. Um, fig <laughs> <laughs> figure out, uh, you know, how you want to deal with it. And uh, if there's something that we missed in our <coughs> discussions about the asshole... Um, please reach out to us on social media. <laughs> There's something you missed in your asshole. <laughs> what? Oh, this is terrible. Thank uh, you guys so much for tuning in. These endings get worse every time, don't they? Thank you guys so much for tuning Thank in. Thank you guys. We've enjoyed it, and we hope you have too. See you next week. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.